I hate Moonshine Mob. Okay, I mean, I love the boss design and I love the music, but this was one of the hardest bosses for me to actually beat and master. So that's why I'm going to do an S rank on this first, because I'm sure other people are having the same problems as me. So for me, my personal preference for weapons is the roundabout and the chaser for this boss. Let me explain why. I know a lot of you suggest different weapons like crack shot or charge shot, but I just don't find them as useful for me personally. I like the roundabout because it's useful for all three phases, especially phases one and two. Chaser is only really used in phase three to deal with the bouncing bug cloud because it moves too fast for the crack shot to hit effectively. For charms, I suggest either using the smoke bomb or Miss Chalice. I like the smoke bomb a bit more, but it's up to you if you like using the dash parry. For supers, I would take Super 1 if you're using Cuphead, or Supers 1 and 2 when using Miss Chalice. If you're having trouble with getting hit, I'd say stick with Super 2, uh, but Super 1 will really help with the damage. So anyways, let's break down the phases. The first is the spider phase. The roundabout is good because if you see the spider coming, you can prep a lot of shots to hit him all at once on the same row. With weapon lock, it also does a decent amount of damage if you're right above or below him as well. If you're ever in a situation where you're too far away for roundabout to effectively hit, you can quickly swap to chaser just to make sure you're always dealing damage to him or some of the other enemies on the screen. The spider has three attacks which he'll use randomly. The first is the spider bombs. You'll hit a button which will drop a number of bombs on the map, and if you get close to one, it'll explode. You can either walk close to it and walk away, or get close and dash through to avoid being hit. When you have a free moment, try to get rid of any nearby bombs just so the map doesn't get too cluttered. The second attack is the Caterpillar Man. He kicks the caterpillar in a diagonal motion that will continue to bounce off the ceiling and the walls. This thing needs to be shot down as soon as possible. You can take it out with a few shots from the roundabout, or you can blow up a nearby bomb too. One really important thing to note is that standing directly above the spider when he kicks the caterpillar will hurt you, so the safest places to stand are in front of the spider or below the spider. Finally, the spider will talk on the phone for a little bit before summoning a bunch of flies. These flies are super easy and, once they appear, will go down in one shot. You can also dash or duck under these flies as well if you're in a pinch. These ant cops will shoot little pink projectiles at you. I recommend trying to get at least two in this phase to make things easier for later phases, but it's up to you. Once the spider is done, you want to stay on the left or right side here and continuously fire your roundabout away from the center. Keep firing like this until you see the music waves start changing color. What you need to do is literally just smoke bomb or dodge roll at the last second when the music hits. If you time it right, that split second of invincibility will let you dodge the beam completely. This will save you a lot of time compared to doing this boss normally. Okay, so when I was playing this, literally everyone in chat says that parrying the pink barrels here don't count for S ranks. I tested this where I parried two projectiles in the first phase and one barrel in the second phase, and it still counted as three parries, so I think they do count. Uh, if you're sticking in the middle section though, you won't really see any pink barrels. So if you're still short a parry, uh, move up or down and parry the barrels when they spawn. Really important here, when she's dying, get off the middle platform. If you have Cuphead Super 1, move to the top platform. If you have Miss Chalice Super 1, drop to the bottom platform. If you're on the platform, switch to Chaser immediately, and once the snail reveals himself, fire your super. If you're underneath the snail, just shoot roundabout shots into the air, and when he reveals himself, hit him with Super 1. Then it's Anteater time. So the Anteater will stick his snout a few times on either the left or right side before extending his tongue. Sometimes he fakes you out with a sneaky little tongue too, so I find it best to stay all the way on the other side of the screen. I've, I've, I've seen about a dozen people tell me to watch his eyes when he's, when he's doing the licky licks to determine when he's going to do the tongue for real, and listen, listen, listen to me. Yes, he does do a squint when he's licking, and that is that's the telltale sign he's going to extend his tongue, but the problem is that there is almost no time to react. Maybe I'm just old, but every time I try to focus on his eyes, I end up getting hit anyways. So for me, I stay on the other side of the screen on the bottom row. If the snout shows up on the bottom row on the opposite side, I jump up to the middle and then return to the bottom when it's safe. 
If he extends his tongue on the middle or top row, I have time to run to the other side underneath it and shoot roundabout bullets at the snout. If the tongue is on the bottom, I can just use that opportunity to parry the tongue a few times to build supers and get the parries I need, and worry about doing damage a little later. After playing this boss hundreds of times, this is the one strategy that has personally worked the best for me. So another big problem is the bouncing bug clouds. Like I mentioned earlier, this is where I use Chaser to quickly get rid of them. Crackshot does more damage, but these clouds are moving so fast that half the time the projectiles just miss, so Chaser is better here. I've also heard lots of rumors about this boss where people say that shooting the tongue hurts him. Um, I don't think shooting the tongue hurts him because the, the nose doesn't flash and the tongue doesn't flash whenever you shoot it. So I'm just going to say the tongue doesn't hurt him. People also say that the tongue does not count for S ranks, but I've also tested it and he it absolutely counts for S ranks. I, I did one where I just parried the tongue three times and I still got the S rank. Once you do this a couple times, the anteater will go down. Finally, it's the snail. He'll only last a few seconds, but if for some reason you still don't have enough parries, you can parry one of his projectiles. It seems to be every three or four shots he shoots, he shoots a pink one. So uh, you can try to parry that. I just end up using Chaser because it's easier. Um, you, if you did everything properly, you should have plenty of time left. And that's it. I still think Moonshine Mob is one of the craziest, hardest stages for me personally, but after hours of practice, I actually started to like it. Crazy, huh? Let me know which boss you want me to do a guide for next in the comments below.